Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti. I am MrPhotographer.com. What a wonderful time of year. It's the time of year when software companies release new software. And in this video, I'm going to talk about Exposure X5. For some house cleaning, the company used to be called Alien Skin Software. They changed their name to Exposure Software. Also, full disclosure, this video is not sponsored. Nobody is paying me to do this video, but I am an Exposure Software affiliate. In the description below this video, I'll have a link to my website and my code of ethics statement that explains what it means to be an affiliate and all the different companies I'm an affiliate for. Now, in the video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that have been added to this software. I'm just going to mention most of them. I'm going to have a list of all the improvements and additions they made to the software. Again, you could find that in the description below the video. I'm going to just mention a few of them and I'm going to demonstrate one of them. And that's what this kind of lousy image is up for up here for. I'm going to uh, demonstrate one of the new features that I think is pretty cool. Now, as far as uh, some of the significant additions, first of all, they've added a bunch of presets, uh, presets over here on the left-hand panel. They've added light and airy presets, uh, season-inspired presets, you know, like autumn and summer and spring and stuff like that. They've added complementary color presets like orange, teal, red, green looks, purple, yellow looks. And they've added a lot more film simulation uh, presets and a lot of people love those. So you'll find those over on the left-hand panel. I'm going to close that down though to give us a little more room. Uh, they've added custom camera profiles. Many people, it was like just a no starter, the non starter. They couldn't move to Exposure X4 because it wasn't compatible with an X right color checker. Uh, many people need in their workflow to have a custom camera profile so they could have the colors be exactly as they need it to be. Uh, that is now integrated in Exposure X5. So if you have an x right color checker and you're getting a camera profile or you have a camera profile, you now could load that into uh, this version of the software. And it really isn't just limited to the color checker, passport, x right, whatever they call the thing. It's not just limited to that. It's whatever, um, so whatever application you have that produces a camera profile, you now could load those um, files into Exposure X4 and utilize them from there. Uh, they have a new chromatic aberration tool. If you go down here and you see the lens corrections, you know, you have this chromatic aberration, but below lens correction, you'll see defringe. And now you could really defringe the image very precisely with this new tool. Uh, let's see. Oh, this next one. I can't believe they never had this. This is uh, just an enhancement to the crop tool. And if we go to the crop tool, you'll see this little icon here. We can now flip the crop from horizontal to vertical and back and forth. I can't believe they ever never really had that. So that's another uh, significant, I guess, enhancement. A lot of people wanted to crop a horizontal image vertically and it was difficult to do, but now you could do it. Now, what I want to talk about though, is this new um, feature called 3D masking. And that's why I have this horrible image showing right now. It's, it's not actually that bad, but what the problem was with this scene is there was a lot of dynamic range. The sky was really, really bright and you could see the buildings and the water, they're relatively dark. So there's a lot of dynamic range. The camera I was using was barely able to capture that dynamic range. But you could see how the midtones and the shadows are really muddy compared to the sky. And I found, I've tried to process this image in several different applications, and it was very difficult. It looks like it could be a great image. The clouds are pretty cool looking, but it was very difficult to process. Now with this 3D masking, it does make it significantly easier. The way it would work is when you're going to attack the image. Now the image hasn't been adjusted at all. It's a straight raw file. Nothing was done to it. And as a matter of fact, you know what? If you want this raw file, you could have it in the description below the video. Um, I'll have a link. You could uh, download it and you could experiment with it yourself. And you can see how difficult it is. Try it in other programs, other applications. 
And you'll see how difficult it is to process. And if you're on Instagram, if you post it to Instagram and tag me on the post, I will share your version of the image in my Instagram story. Two things, just write what application you use to process the image. And also, may, if your Instagram is private and I'm not following you, I won't see it. This happened when I did this before. A lot of people were sh uh, tagging me on their image, but because their Instagram was private, I didn't even get noticed that I was tagged. So if you have a private Instagram, this won't work. Your Instagram has to be public and you post it to Instagram, tag me on the post, and I will share it in my Instagram story. Now, to process this using this new 3D color masking, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break it up into two parts. I'm going to process, this, process the sky separately from the buildings and water. So what I'm going to do is start with the sky. So I'm just processing for the sky. I don't care what it does to the buildings, right? So I'm going to go to the basic tab and the sky is bright. I got to rain those highlights in. So I'll bring highlights down. As a matter of fact, maybe bring exposure down a touch too. So we're raining in the highlights. Let's move that. The shadow slider really isn't doing any to the sky, anything to the sky. Um, I'll get a... Um, excuse me, a white point. I'm going to hold the alter option key and it's alt if you have a piece option if you have a Mac and I'm going to move it to the right until I see some color start to break through. And then I'm going to back it off till that color has gone. And now again, I'm just concerned about the sky. You see how it's really destroying the uh, buildings, but I don't care. I really don't care. Same thing with blacks. I'll do that and I can move that till I don't think that's going to affect the sky much even at max. So, so I'm not even going to adjust blacks. For the sky i'm going to add clarity to that sky a lot of clarity i'm not going to add any vibrance or saturation because look at the blue that blue is pretty blue and i don't want to make it look unnatural so we'll leave that alone um let me see i'm going to even add a little more a little contrast let's add some contrast again i'm just looking at the sky i don't care about anything as a matter of fact, that blue is starting to look too blue, and I haven't even touched vibration and saturation. I found, actually, with this camera, sometimes the blues come out a little strong. And in the description below the video, I'll have a list of my uh, equipment I used. You could check that out if you'd like to uh, know the camera and the settings and all that stuff. Uh, let's see. I am going to go to color, and I'm going to take care of this blue. So I'm going to go to saturation. I'm going to pull some saturation away from that blue. And I'm going to make that blue just a little brighter. It just doesn't look right. It just looked fake, didn't it? So we'll do that. Okay, so I processed this. I processed this. <laughs> Easy for me to say. I processed the sky for this really quick demonstration. Okay, so let's say that that's good. Now, I got to deal with this, these buildings and the water. So what I'm going to do is, uh, first of all, I want to relegate the processing I just did only to the sky. And this is where the 3D masking comes in. I'm going to click on the mask. And you can see if I hover over it, the entire image gets a red overlay on it. That's, I'm applying the, the adjustments everywhere. That's what the white mask is indicating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll down. You can see there's a new section here. I'll make it a little bigger. It's called Color Constraints. Luminance, Saturation, and Hue. This will help us control where these adjustments I just did get applied. First of all, we'll start with luminance. I have a range here, and you can see there's two sets of triangles. There's the top set of triangles. That's the actual range. And then the bottom set of the triangles is the feathering. This helps you kind of feather it into exactly where you want it to be and make it look natural. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper, and I'm going to click on this bright sky because I want it to affect these highlights and whites that are in the image. So I'm going to click once and you can see it kind of looks kind of ugh, yeah, ugly, right? But that's okay. What we're going to do now is we're going to blend it by kind of pulling away the range, kind of widening the range a little bit, right? Just a little bit. And then we'll come in, we'll feather it maybe a little better. Feathering 
You can see how feathering is really just affecting the bottom part. I don't really care. I'm just really worried about the sky right now. I just want to look at the sky. All right, let's do saturation two. I'll click on the little eyedropper. And I'm going to, again, just click on this uh, white sky. You can see how that kind of excluded then a lot of that other part. So we're going to feather it in again. Just kind of move these around and see what they do and see if it improves or makes the image look worse. All right. So I'm just coming in again, just kind of playing around here, moving them around, tweaking the adjustment. Okay. I just want to limit it as much as I can to the sky. And I don't think I need to do anything with you, but if I could, did, I would. But I think that's okay. And we're going to go up here and we're going to look at our mask. And look at the mask. I'm going to hover over it. And you can see now the red is mostly on the sky. It's really not on the bottom part of the image. So these adjustments mainly now are affecting the sky. And that's where I want those adjustments relegated to. Now I need to do something with those buildings and the water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this mask and I'm going to right click and I'm going to click on copy mask. Then I'm going to go up here and add a layer. Then I'm going to right click on the mask for this new layer and paste the mask. Now it's the same exact mask, <clears throat> mask that we created, but what we're going to do is we're going to right click on it and we're going to invert the mask. So now, any adjustments I do will just be down here on the buildings. But what I need to do now is, I'm not, I don't worry about, I don't need to do range or any of this stuff really, just leave it alone. But what I'm going to do is go to uh, the adjustments themselves and reset those. So I'm just gonna reset the basic adjustments for now. All right, and then now I'm processing for the buildings and everything else. So I'll come in, I'll open up shadows. I'm gonna add, um, I'm gonna add some exposure. And I'll bring in whites a touch. It's still affecting the sky a little bit and I'm gonna take care of that in a moment. All right, so we'll come down here, we'll add some clarity and we'll add a little saturation down. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump down to color and I'm going to reset the blues, but I'm going to go to the um, luminance slider and I'm going to make the greens just a little brighter, maybe bring the yellows down a touch. Okay. Now I, you can see it did affect the sky a little bit and it is looking much better. If I do a before after, uh, there's before and there's after there's before and there is after. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go to these uh, ranges here. Now this, I am clicked on this mask, that top mask. So we're going to be just affecting the mask that is affecting the buildings in the water. So what I want to do is I just want to move it around and adjust, you know, feathering. This uh, luminance one doesn't seem to be doing a whole lot because I'm in the wrong range. But if I move kind of in... Move this one and feather it a little more. Then for the saturation one, move that to the right. You can see how that's affecting the sky a little bit, kind of excluding or including things. So you just kind of, kind of finesse these until you get it the way you want. And really, that's it. I got two layers with two different masks. The bottom layer was all my adjustments for the sky. And if I go to the basic tab and look at these adjustments now, and I click on this, you can see how those adjustments are different than that one, because this top one is the adjustments for the buildings. And again, there's a before and there's an after before after. So this, um, 3D color masking that is now in Exposure X5, I think is really cool and it does a nice job and it allows you to apply adjustments and you could uh, kind of uh, target that adjustment to either a specific hue, a specific saturation, color saturation, or a specific uh, luminance 
level, brightness level uh, to your image. And in doing so, we could open this. So we have luminance, saturation, U. You could use all three. You could use two like I did. I just used luminance, saturation. Or you could just use one and just kind of target your adjustment. If you have just a bright part you want to affect, just use luminance. If you have a specific um, color that you want to affect, you could use saturation and or hue to do that. And I think it does a great job. There's before and there's after. Again, there'll be links for everything I talked about in the description below the video. Please uh, read my code of ethics statement. There'll be a link for that in the description below the video. Do me a favor, subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, ring that bell or click on that bell so you get updates whenever I post a new video. Share and like this video. And remember what I said about Instagram. Uh, you're going to have to follow me on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Anthony Morganti. That will be linked below this video as well. And when you follow me and you process this image, uh, share it on Instagram, tag me in the post. And in the description of what you, you know, the image is about, write what application you use to process it. I call these a photo challenge, a photo processing challenge. So that's your challenge. Process this image so that it looks halfway decent. And I'll share it in my Instagram story. Thank you, everyone. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon. <laughs>